Hello, I'm Pint, the best mage player in the whole world. Let me ask you, what do you think of when you think of a mage? Big damage? Easy gold farming? Oh, yes. Greater PvP? Well, while that is true, it's not all sunny skies and free portals galore. To an outside observer, there is no downside to free water and food. But all mages know firsthand that being cursed to roleplay as a sentient AI trapped inside of a vending machine for 8 hours a day is really going to start making you question your self-worth. By the end of this video, you're going to understand exactly what it's like to be a mage, as I impart my infinite wisdom upon you. Like a generous, but also kinda gay god. From the ever-bountiful highs, to the mildly inconvenient lows, this is 10,000 Hours of Mage. So, with the release of Classic World of Warcraft, you decide to give your relationship with Blizzard another shot. And I swear it's not gonna be abusive this time, because he, he loves me deep down, I, I swear. Now, to ready yourself for a grand future, you need to pick your class. Now, you could spend a bunch of time researching and comparing classes to find what's right for you, or you could- World of Warcraft Classic, what is the best class in the game? In fact, since picking my class was such a breeze, the most difficult decision I'd have to make was which color pigtails were the cutest. And then, I was ready for launch. And that, my friends, is where the mage experience truly starts to pick up. If you're somehow unfamiliar with the major leveling experience, let me sum it up for you. While many great philosophers have made mage, I believe that my interpretation is the most eloquent of all. Dude, this shit's fucking tight. <laughs> Launch week was easily one of the best experiences I've ever had in gaming, and I own all the Sakura games on Steam. And of course, with such an abundance of people, you're bound to meet some colorful characters along the way. I look like a bear because I'm a fucking big, hairy, fucking Persian dude. And like, so yeah, I do kind of look like a bear, but not a fucking gay bear. Um, maul you, maul your face, bear. Ah, it all holds such a dear place in my heart. It's so dear that I almost forgot about the 20,000 player queues. During that first week or so, leveling resembled a swarm of diseased rats, or sometimes very polite rats, laying waste to a small indie company's crop field. And it was truly a testament to the primal savage nature hardwired into mankind's DNA. So as popular as I am, I knew I was going to have to spend as much time as I could leveling alone. Luckily, Mage excels with this. With fat AoE damage as early as level 21, you have no need to concern yourself with mortal concepts such as friends. When you have crowd control, 13 hours to kill, and some lo-fi hip-hop beats to relax slash study to, that, my friend, is a 5-star gourmet recipe for success. So, you've been playing mage for a little while, huh? Oh wow, and you just got improved Blizzard! How about you go try it out in that pack of gnolls over there? But sometimes, try as you might, social interaction with other players is inevitable. Sooner or later, you might want to come out of that shell of yours and make a few... F friend friends Luckily, major leveling is just as good with other players as it is solo. Your ability to polymorph, slow mobs, and rip aggro from the tank every pull, die, and still end up doing more damage than anyone else in a dungeon makes you a valuable asset. Or at least that's what I keep telling myself. <laughs> You know, I gotta say, despite the amount of utility Mage brings to the table, dungeon groups tend not to like us very much. I can definitely say that I've had my fair share of experiences that ended in... Ah, who needs those melee classes anyway? Behold, the perfect group. Unfortunately, with so many people attracted to such a class, this led to the rise of mage misogyny. As if overnight, playing a mage became almost synonymous with being a dumb fuck. So what if they can't figure out their one-button rotation? So what if they keep pulling when the healer has no mana? Mages are the new huntards, they say? <laughs> Have you no empathy? There, there. Don't listen to them. 
But it wasn't long before people looked down on you just for being a frosty boy. Your problems do not matter. You are a mage. You have it so much easier than everyone else. And to that I say... Yes, we do have it easier. Thank you and goodbye. During my leveling experience, I found a new hobby. Killing people. I have no code of ethics, I will kill anyone, anywhere. Children, animals, old people, doesn't matter. I just love killing. Some days I'd just log on and I wouldn't even level. I'd just look for victims to fuel my insatiable thirst for blood. And around this time, I was starting to get some clout, so I had a real target on my back. Enter Mr. Bojangles. If you were Alliance on White Mane trying to farm Devil Soul Leather in the first couple months of Classic, the mere mention of Bojangles was enough to make you pack up your bags. Oh wait, you're dead, and he took your leather, boo hoo. This dude was in Angoro Crater 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, and he wasn't even a fat virgin, he got mad pussy, what a chad. This guy was like the first level 60 rogue on the fucking server. And he had so much gold, dude, he was filthy rich, he was making thousands per day. And maybe he even made a shitload of money in real life from selling all of his gold, but you didn't hear that from me. Could anyone stop this outrageous man? Could any soul survive his rampage? Yeah, me. Now I could show you some big shatter crits or tell you how cool Ice Block is, and it's pretty fucking cool. But I think that the best way for you to understand Mage PvP is to show you. So without further ado, I give you my legendary level 46 encounter with the fabled Bojangles. So I'm PvPing with my good pal Thought Cheeto, and I notice that my party mate Tisky's been killed. So I head over to his body to see if I can help him escape or something. But something doesn't feel quite right. There's no one around. How, how could he have died? And that's when it happened. Oh no! It's fucking Bojangles! I dismount and use my blink move, but he's right on my tail, so I have to use Frost Nova. Now, rogues have a bit of a habit of vanishing when you know them, so I'll start casting a five- <laughs> He vanished. Oh no. A couple good hits from his dowring and I'm done. Okay, it's time for my hidden technique. <laughs> a perfectly timed ice block protects me from danger and gives me some distance. So I hit him with a cone and a coal to keep him off my back, and luckily crippling poison doesn't proc. I try to get a fat poly, but ah, I'm blind. So it all comes down to this. I sit in blind and I wait. I'm spamming Blink as fast as I can, praying he doesn't one-shot me and then... Blink. Polly. Shield. Mount. Now you might think that running away isn't really considered a victory, but at least I didn't die, and that was enough to gain the respect of Bojangles and his peers. While all my friends were getting ganked in Menethil Harbor, I was laughing, sailing the seven seas, definitely not being killed by him the next attempt, it didn't happen. Now you may be wondering what this has to do with Mage, so let's look at this situation if I was a druid. So I'm walking through Feralus and- Ah no, ah fuck no, ah fuck no, ah. I mean, if you think about it, mage can do pretty much anything. The only thing mages can't really do is heal or go invisible. But with bandages, anyone can heal, and you can always use an invisibility potion to get away with some mischief if you need. I'd like to see a rogue use a blink potion. I mean, it's insane how much one single player can contribute to a fight in classic PvP. This exact clip by Venaruki was what made me make the final decision to play mage. Anyway, the way PvP works in Classic is a matter of rock-paper-scissors. Rogues are scissors, warriors are rocks, warlocks are fucking nukes that never die, holy shit! <clears throat> uh, anyway, here are the matchups. Ooh, yikes, not looking too hot, right? Well, if you assume you're a little better than the other player or you have the jump on them, you're probably gonna beat all of these classes, cause it's kind of an even match. And you can even beat some classes like a Shadow Priest if you're smart enough to outplay them. <laughs> wait, wait, cut, no, no, no! Now, admittedly, most classes have weak and strong matchups, but Mage is special. First of all, surviving an encounter with a good rogue is something that few other classes can boast. But most importantly, you destroy warriors. Yeah. 
Now, warriors often have very large egos to compensate for their tiny swords. And warriors out in the wild don't have the easiest of lives, but nothing brings me more joy than crushing their macho ego with my tiny gnome in a dress. As a mage, it is literally your duty to make the lives of each and every warrior you see a living hell. You got that, soldier. And since warrior, mage, and rogue are the most popular classes, you're probably going to be winning a lot more fights as you're going to be encountering more of them than any other class. But that comes at a cost, my dear friend, because when you look at a mage's weaknesses, you will see something truly terrifying. No, no, not, not Warlocks and Shadow Priests, everyone dies to those. I'm talking about this little fuck right here. <sighs> That's right, Mage loses to the worst class in the game. You fucking heard me, Druid Mains, I fucking said it. Just as easily as you can destroy a warrior's ego, a Druid can be waiting there to ravage, shred, and mangle yours. But the upside is that Druids are the least popular class, and ones that'll actually pose a threat to you are even fewer in numbers. <laughs> Now, it's pretty fucking common knowledge that Major's AoE is one of the major selling points of the class, and seeing a group of enemies all stacked up in one nice clump is enough to make any mage arcane explode all over their keyboard. However, in classic PvP, generally, the side with more players will tend to win, but mage has a better chance than any other to escape or win these fights. Take this clip, for example. I'm level 57, and for some reason I'm AFK on this dirt road. When suddenly... These two scallywags come along thinking they can tango. The rogue doesn't even bother to stun me, as he thinks I'm a free kill, so I blink out of their classic move. The priest dots me up, but I get a polymorph off and begin to book it. I manage to leave combat and mount up. But it's not over yet, ladies and gentlemen, as I see my opponent is a fast boy while I'm stuck with just a basic chicken. I scramble to find my carrot on a stick to gain any ground I can, but alas, it seems all hope is lost as Cal Rogo is pursuing me on his epic warhorse, and I know it's only a matter of time before my little gnome ass is his. But what's this? A level 35 rogue named Gangster in Western Plaguelands? My eyes must be deceiving me. However, none of that actually matters because your average PvP experience is going to look something like this. Unless, of course, you join a pre-maid, which is gonna directly fucking conflict with your raiding and gold farming because you need to switch specs every single time you wanna do a different task. If you wanna raid, you gotta spend 50 gold. Oh, you wanna PvP, 50 gold. Fuck, it's not fair. I am really not a fan of the ranking system, <laughs> but I do love PvPing. That's why I started Classic in the first place. So, is this it? Am I just destined to sit in BGs all day, ranking my life away? Yes, but actually no. For a long time, this script was just gonna harp on how terrible the ranking system was and how honor made PvP feel bad, especially because I wrote it just after I gave up on ranking. But after a much needed break, I have discovered that you in fact do not need to be farming honor for PvP to be worth your time. You can in fact do it for fun. Let me tell you, no amount of honor is gonna be killing some kid out in the world and then messaging him on Discord telling him what a fucking idiot he is. And white means a pretty high pop server, so you're not gonna run out of targets anytime soon. So rise up, friends. Reject ranking. Embrace true PvP. Lest we forget the early days of Phase 2.
Now I'm sure you've heard that Mage has one of the easiest times with gold farming, but what literally every single person failed to fucking mention is that gold farming is the most boring thing in the world. Hey guys, it's me Frostomus. Uh, today we're going to be doing a gold farm for 10,000 gold per hour. And uh, by the end of it, you're gonna want to fucking kill yourself, holy shit! If you mess up and get even slightly too close to mobs... <laughs> maybe this is more of a personal gripe, but being European playing on a US server didn't help much either. I'd say that my biggest issue with gold farming is that it requires your full attention. I just want to binge watch YouTube while playing video games all day, is this too much to ask? <sighs> my life is so hard. If only there was a way to make gold without even moving. Mage. What can I help you with? Can you give me a portal to Stormwind? I will tip you three gold. No, no. You know the price. Oh jeez. Okay, I guess. Shlap 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 slap yes. shlap shelf shlap mel mel. Discovering that I could make a full-time business by selling my Gamer Girl P in World of Warcraft was truly a turning point in my WoW career. Some days I would just log on to WoW and not move an inch, just selling water. Are you really a mage if you don't create 12 pages of lore about your life as a vending machine, complete with a deviant art character drawing with huge tits and a tragic backstory but also dark powers? My personal vending machine original roleplay character, Please Do Not Steal, was a young gnome girl trying to make her way in the world with just a camera and an internet connection. Subscribe to my gnomely fans for more information. <laughs> Look man, if you're gonna sit in one spot for 12 hours a day, at least have some fun with it. But this is where my tale takes a dark turn, ladies and gentlemen. I did something truly unspeakable. <laughs> I thought to myself, Hey, if I can make gold without moving, why can't I get honor without moving? So I went into Altaric Valley and I- <coughs> And that was it, I was banned for one whole week. At first I was outraged because it meant I was going to miss two raids, but this of course led me to the true mage endgame. Open cell nine. I'm speaking to you as a reformed man. My time in the slammer has given me plenty of space to reflect. I used to spend a lot of time optimizing the fun out of the game, with hours of ranking or getting world buffs for passes. I was angry a lot of the time at my raid members for not playing optimally or getting my fucking loot. <laughs> and then one day I quit. I had had enough. For a long time I did nothing and just chalked WoW up as a bad game. But then I realized... My entire time in Classic WoW, every decision I made, the friends I chose, the guilds I joined, the class I made, was all to fuel my incredibly fragile ego. To confirm that yes, I am in fact good at this 15 year old video game, and god damn it, I will prove it. And that makes me a better person than you. I'm sure you've met plenty of mages like me. <laughs> Is it really that simple? Did I just roll this class not because it was right for me, but because I saw Venruki bang some scrub out? Did I pick this class just because a guide said it was good? Can I even make decisions for myself anymore? Has Classic WoW just been some elaborate railroad where I followed the masses for big numbers? Am I just a sheep? Am I real? Uh, oh no, no, I'm not real. A mage would never reflect on their inner personal demons. But then I came back and I played the game for just a week. I did some random BGs for fun, I hung out with my friends, PvPing, I did a couple of ZG pugs, and I realized maybe it wasn't so bad after all. So I adopted sort of a new philosophy. Now I'm a very competitive person, so I figured, it's time to pass happiness, boys. I am never getting another fucking world buff in my entire goddamn life. So, with all the highs and the lows, when all the cards are laid out on the table and you can see your entire mage experience so clearly before you, ask yourself, if you could start over, would you do it all over again? Is mage the best class in the game? 
Yes, it is. I'm leveling my second mage. It's Pont on white main. P-O-N-T. Send me gold. And my main, uh, it's a uh, pint. P-I-N-T. That's pint on white main alliance. Also, my retail character is Pont on Zoldrian US. Please send me gold there too. Like and subscribe. Bye. Hi, it's me, Pint. Long, long time no see. <laughs> so, if you enjoyed this video, go check out my Patreon. I make editing tutorials and shit over there. Now, for excuses, I had to build a computer halfway through this video and my fucking mic broke. And this style of content took way longer to make than I thought it would. I rewrote the skip script like five times, and on top of all that, I was lazy. So, I fucking promise it won't take as long next time. I thank you for sticking around, man. Thank you for watching this this much, this far. I took a big risk with the style of content. Cool, bye. <laughs>